I'm have making some eggs stuff. right now, boys. I'm in the kitchen. Nice. What do you got Tyler's on those in eggs? in the kitchen with. Tyler's I'm going to put some cheese on them. I'm going to put a little bit of meat in it. I'm going nice. to put a little uh, salt and pepper. Nice. Tyler's in the kitchen with Alpha. Tyler's in the kitchen. He knows. Are you cooking <laughs> some for Alpha? <Appa? laughs> I'll probably give him some. I mean, I give him every single fucking thing that I ever eat in my life, minus chocolate and grapes. And dip. Yeah, chop. Yeah, chop. Oh, great mind. I don't eat chair. Dogs also can't eat onions. Really? And sugar-free like, gum. And really? avocado. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? This is Shanman XC with the OGSP YouTube channel, uh, and welcome to episode four of Scrub Watch, a console player's podcast um, for Blizzard's Overwatch. So today we got a few topics on the list. Um, I'm going to let my uh, fellow co-host Bobby kick us right off with topic number one. Bobby, why don't you read it on down, boy? <laughs> Yo, what up, dude? Um, so the uh, first topic is definitely going to be Genji's hitbox and how huge it is. It's literally the hugest. It's huge. We could have built a think, wall. You know, it's shit. a little, it's a little annoying playing against when like you're going for someone else and then you try and shoot and then a reflecting Genji comes out of nowhere and it's not even you're not even aimed at them and it's it gets reflected. So is it being? I don't. I, I actually don't know anything about this. Is it being? enlarged it's no, like the it's size of rude hog like, yeah it's really big and like oh. it's it's even like behind them like i've seen videos of people shooting at a genji when he's reflecting and it's behind him and it still gets reflected somehow <laughs> all right sounds good um russ but why don't you hit us off with topic number two Team. All right, topic number two is uh, revolving around the Overwatch League and some updated uh, news and events that have gone down. So the pretty popular streamer XQC, who was on the Dallas Fuel My this past week, got uh, released by the team. Uh, the PR statement said that it was mutual later came out in an interview he did with the Washington Post saying that he pretty much tried to fight it and stay on the team, but they pretty much kicked him off. So <laughs> let's basically discuss kind of what led to that and some of the things that could come moving forward because of it. A lot of idiocracy. <laughs> He's a nice yeah. guy. Well, I have a thought. Uh, so we see this a lot in, in other professional sporting leagues. So it's kind of interesting because, like, he's the first, really, of the Overwatch League to get kicked out for his behavior. But, like, you know, you see that a lot. Like, Johnny Manziel might not be the greatest example, but guys like that. So I don't know. I yeah. think it's just interesting how it's starting to parallel real sports. Like, the personnel is going to behave so... as any sport would. Oh, yeah. The one thing that I would say to go along with that of it is paralleling other sports, but something that I think will happen very soon in the near future is like a players association or a players union to protect yeah. the uh, gamers against the Overwatch League and Blizzard in general, just because like right now, basically the league has complete control over whether a person's going to get banned, whether they're like anything. So Kind of like you were saying, Schneids, it's really becoming like other professional sports, and every other professional sports organization has a players' union. So I, I, thought you I were think eventually. Like Nazi Germany. <laughs> no. I mean, I understand why you got kicked. You know, they, they want to, they have a PR, like they have a public reputation now. It's not just yeah. them playing. For just sure. nonchalant. I don't like, like I don't like the last thing he did to get banned though. Like spamming yeah. the try hard seven. That was like really stupid to ban somebody on or like 
the main cause or whatever. I, yeah, that so was yeah. not ban worthy at all because Can you like, what he that came is out. For our viewers? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so basic, either. basically, when he in the Overwatch League cast, when they were casting the matches, one of the analysts or hosts was on who is African American and oh, God. basically and the the uh, try hard emote is a black man emote followed by the number 7 and they basically correlated him posting that while that analyst was on as him being racist oh, and boy. even in the ban they said that it was for racial like slurs or racial usage in the Overwatch League broadcast. But I really think that they messed up big time in doing so because like there's so much evidence to support that that wasn't what it was meant for. Like I was watching XQC stream the other day and he basically said that from when it started until now, Overwatch League, he's put oh. the tryhard seven emote like a hundred and eighty times in the chat. And oh. it just so happened that one time when he got on and put it in there, uh, it was when that analyst was on. And he essentially says that he tries he uses it exclusively like on his stream in chat, just to be like, Hey, what's up? Like I'm here, try hard seven. So it was, I don't know. I think he he definitely placed a target on his back early on with some of the stuff that he did and said. But also, like, as it went on, he was getting banned and, like, punished for things that he shouldn't have just they because he had put that him. target on his back. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not something you want, like, as a league. You want to, you know, be you want to be transparent, you know? You want to be able to hold yourself as a league accountable too and that's why i think the players union is something that might not have been talked about that much but that's a really good thought yeah i had no idea that's uh i don't i mean you know who knows what was what actually happened i mean i wasn't there none of us were there but it might have just been there. a move to like get him out of the league because he's just been having exactly. so much mm -hmm. like publicity Okay, but like, yeah. so who actually banned him though? Wasn't it Dallas that banned him? No. Technically? No, nah, like, I don't think Overwatch, so. Oh. Overwatch League find him after the thing happened. They find him and banned him for four games. And yeah. then huh. he was let and then go. Dallas so Dallas let, him let him go, go right? Dallas yeah, let him so go. Dallas the league the go. set forth the initial ban and the $4,000 right. fine. But, but the Overwatch League wasn't the one that had left Picked him, him out completely. Yeah. No. Okay. It was Dallas. I heard, I forgot which teammate, but one of the teammates was talking about like how like part of the reason they banned him was because he's a, he's a main tank and it's like, they picked him up to be a main tank and it's hard to play around when your main tank is, you know, banned for a stream. Oh, yeah. 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 I think it was Custa on his stream. Yeah, yeah, it was right. basically saying like, we tried, like, he's such an integral part. The main tank role is such an integral part of the dive comp, especially nowadays. Like, yeah. they tried him out on stage one, gets banned for all of stage one. They start practicing, like, really hard with him to start stage two, try to get, like, really good as a team, and then he gets banned again. So it's like, you can't really do anything as a team if the one person that, like, you're really trying to build around, which is their main tank, continues to, like, be a question mark or up in the air. Yeah. So I, I understand that from Dallas's point of view. Yeah, for but sure. But still, like, I, he could have gone out a better way. And that's just... For sure. Kinda... I don't know. Yeah. I'm just Yeah, I but there there are rumors that he may be signing with the San Francisco Shock or he may just be like chilling I, and only streaming. I think he's just going to stream. I mean, he'd be stupid to try and do it again. Yeah. Uh, the other day when he was streaming, the other day when he was streaming in the uh like the quick chat or like the chat on the bottom left dante like messaged him and was like when are you signing with us and then he was like oh shit you're streaming cut the vod but he could it's probably just a troll it's knowing like xqc yeah yeah uh, i was i was gonna say one more thing even though it's been a long topic but i i would say like uh a better example is like alden smith as you guys know we went to missouri 
he was one of those guys that was like such a talented Dude. player, and I don't think he's in the league anymore. So, what are you guys' thoughts on what Dallas, how Dallas will do in the in the future? Even though they've, I mean, this week without XQC, they they lost. I think they're going to continue to like. I think they're going to pretty much take the original envious team and just break them all apart and re-sign a bunch of people. Like the there's rumors, the same person that initially got the info on XQC being released, also said that he got uh, information from the same source saying that they're looking to release Taimu and Coco. So I could, see them, oh I could see them getting rid of definitely rebuild? Coco. Yeah, Coco. That's a hard rebuild. Definitely yeah, Coco. Mean... They have so many DPS at this point that Taimu doesn't really fill a role other than like a hog. Yeah, like right now, he's, right now he's playing main tank, which is extremely strange. They just lost to Boston 4-0 yeah. yesterday, and it was yeah. could be... horrible. I think they're going to keep struggling, and through the end of the first season of the Overwatch League, they'll be a bottom three team, which is what they're at right now. Right. This I think could they're just be mixing up roles too much. Like, yeah, they they're are. doing Taimu on tank, which I understand because he's a shot caller, but, like, you got to so you... put Taimu on, like, something good. They just need a better it's... shot caller. Do you think it's Kai Kai's fault then, like, the their coach? Nah. I don't think I it's think... his fault. I think one thing that they do – and this goes along with, um, like, switching things up too much. They just need to settle on one consistent composition. Like, right now, the meta is dive. And all teams pretty much run dive. With the exception of, like, a few things changed in and out. Like, they will come in with, like, just an insane comp. And they'll run it really well. But in the long run, throughout an entire match, they'll just get destroyed because they can't run the most standard meta comp and they'll lose. Like, well, and this has never to... been known for dive, though. Yeah, but I think it's really showing that they can't, like, they can't run these standard comps. Yeah, I mean, it's still so young overall. I, I think that we'll definitely see new players emerge. I mean... You know, yeah, that's a podcast know, like, on its was, own right. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, that's why I wanted to bring it up at least yeah, a little bit. Here. Yeah. I didn't like <laughs> You know, and I ask I ask any of our couple of viewers, uh, like, do you like this Overwatch League content? Because I think it's pretty fun to talk about. I mean, I'm a big sports fan. We, I'm sure we all are. Uh, and we know a lot about sports. And I just think it's interesting to study this because this is really one of the first of its kind. And we're probably going to start seeing more personnel shift because we're not, it's the first season. We're not used to personnel shifting a lot, but like, you know, are trades allowed? I don't even know, but that's another interesting topic. Yeah. Trades are allowed. Yeah. So I think we're going to start once, once more people start to change up their personnel, I think we'll start to see it, you know, evolve a lot more to where if something's not working, teams aren't going to wait as long to fix it. So warming up, uh, do you do it? And how long slash what do you do? So uh, this is something I'm not quite sure about. I'm, sh I'm sure the pros warm up, but you guys might know a little bit more about, about their strategies for that. Um, does anybody? <laughs> I don't warm up in Overwatch, but when I played CSGO, I would always warm up. And I, I don't know if that's just because it's more aim intensive or... Did it help you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Did you, like, try uh, not warming up and playing the game? See how that yeah. yeah. I would try, like, just in CSGO, but, like, yeah, yeah. it's just warming up, like, knowing how far to flick. And this might be different, like, for PC, but. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I think I, it also depends a lot on your role in the team. Like, if you're a DPS player, you're definitely going to have, like, it would de definitely be more helpful. For sure. Those I'd fast say. Twitch characters, like, I definitely want to get around them before I play Tracer. Yeah, Having a smurf I mean, is good. talking about, I know Schneid's you reference, like, what the pros do, I think, be, like, every single one of them warm up for sure. They'll oh, go yeah. to, like, the I mean, practice range. They'll do the same routine that they do. There was like a, actually a special on Effect who 
ironically plays on the field, which is what we were just talking about. But his entire practice routine, they highlighted like probably last week on the Overwatch League where he'll do, he comes in early before everybody. He does an hour's worth of uh, aim. Like, I think it's, I forget what the exact, yeah, 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 yeah. So he does it, which is basically like an aim assist, like it helps your aim online application. Then he does 30 minutes of like aim hero. Then he does like 30 minutes in the training with the bots. And then he does like an hour's worth of just AI against him. And then he basically goes into a match. So he literally warms up for like two fucking hours on his aim. Have you guys played Osu? No. No, I haven't. I it it looks so it. tough. Yeah, I've played it. It's pretty tough. I played a little bit of it though. The real. But do you think that translates into like actual? Gameplay? I don't think Osu does. Nah, but... I think it mostly just gets your like hand eye. Yeah, get your hands. Hand eye, that like, like ready. Program? Yeah, I no, think it. Yeah, yeah, it definitely warms you up, like your hands and stuff, and yeah, your hand eye coordination. But it has nothing to do. Like it's completely different, like uh, movements than Overwatch. My yeah. warm up is dependent on if I take my Adderall before playing or not. <laughs> uh, if I do. I usually don't warm up. Le- Same with I don't, or I just lose. Legally, I have a prescription, uh, legitimately. I know I always sound like I'm uh, sketchy when I'm talking, but I actually do. I do a lot of illegal drugs as well, but not that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but All that right. was a joke. Brings us... That was satire. <laughs> just satire. All in, all in good, good fun. Um, so, which brings us to our main topic. Um, we, so, we're a little bit light on news, you know, after last week with um, the new character and everything like that. Um, so, this week, I just wanted to everyone to kind of um, give a short summary of their introduction to Overwatch. So, their, you know, first um, few hours into the game, how you came about it, how you heard of it. Um, I know a lot of us share the same story um, as we started together. Russell got it first. But, no, um, I thought Joe got it. Well, Joe actually yeah. got, got okay. it first. Correct. So, so, I can start if you want. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. We'll Obviously, go you guys said it. Big shout out to Joe McKenna, who no longer <laughs> plays the game on the PlayStation. But yeah. he uh, he plays on PC now. But basically, he cool. messaged in our group and was like, yo, there's this cool game that's gotten good reviews. Do you guys want to try it out? Because pretty much... All five of us and Joe, uh, I guess not Bobby too much, but in college, we all kind of like rotated through games, whether it be on Gauntlet. PlayStation 2, Gauntlet, Mario Tennis on N64. Ooh, like Mario all of Tennis us were. We put thousands of hours into. Yeah, all of us were really competitive when it came to like gaming against each other. So the thought of getting another like really good team based game that we could all play together, Joe found it. And Shannon, with his Best Buy skills, went ahead and ordered it for me to pick up at my nearest Best Buy. (laughs) And I went and picked it up, and pretty much we went from there. I think a lot of us were playing, at least uh, speaking for myself, I was playing a lot of Rocket League then. And when I first got Overwatch, I thought it was pretty cool, but I was still playing more Rocket League, I'd say. And then it slowly transitioned to playing way more Overwatch and way less Rocket League. Yeah, and then I think pretty much all of us, except for Bobby, have been here since Season 1, so... I remember when we first got it, like, everyone would play except Rustbolt, and Rustbolt would be on Rocket League. Rocket League, (laughs) yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, That's it was fun. definitely um, cool. I remember picking it up, yeah, at Best Buy and, you know, just rotating through each and every hero, you know, just doing quick plays and uh, just how unique, you know, it was. It's just like a, a fighting game turned into a shooter. First Blizzard game since StarCraft Two, which I, you know, kind of played, not really competitively, just, you know, me and a friend played it. But uh, I, you know, we just kind of gained momentum as picking up more uh, people to play with and it has turned into this. Bobby, how did uh, how, I forget when you joined? You can go I joined we should go right in before order. the uprising event. Oh, okay. Wait, right before and the uprising event? Yeah, that was my first, first event. 
So it was basically like a year after the game came out. Okay, so I know I got the game July sixth. July sixteenth, my mom's birthday. I got the game that day. Shannon worked at Best Buy. Uh, used to. And so. Formerly. Used to. And mm-hmm. so he got me a copy, but I remember being skeptical for a while. Uh, I didn't join right away because I had never really, like, I, I mean, I played Halo, Gears of War is a favorite. I played shooters, but never, like, uber competitively. And I always, I mean, I always usually preferred open world games, Morrowind, shout out. Uh, and so I was skeptical. And I remember Shannon came over and he's like, dude, like, it's pretty cool. And I watched him play. Played Junkrat was my first uh hero but i was very skeptical and then now look at me now i have uh 1370 1375 hours on my main account uh (laughs) many more on the other ones and i'm still uh i'm okay but uh i don't know i really like i think you have the most on the out of all of us the most yeah by far yeah for sure shout uh, out to that admiral (laughs) prescription what I really, what drew me to the game having massive ADD is, um, it's it's not like a typical Call of Duty shooter that where I would get bored because it's just like a bunch of fucking ten year olds, uh, just being little bitches. Like there's that in Overwatch, but I like the variety, and I like kind of how it's like X Men. It's like an X Men shooter is how I describe it. But yeah, yeah, that's how I got so into it. So much more depth than a Call of Duty. So much more you can get, you know, out of it. I would say. You and can I th- invoke your personality into it, like. Yeah, I think I speak for all of us too. Is one big thing that kind of kept us all like wanting to keep playing, wanting to like get better, is at least for me. In all other games, compared to Overwatch, like Overwatch has such a good community granted you get like toxic players but i'm more so talking like outside of the game blizzard does such a good job of like making changes keeping you informed the overwatch league like there's so much stuff outside of the game too that really like keeps you wanting to play the game i'd say i would yeah definitely agree do you think that's bad for beginners though like how much they change the game uh because I know with, like, some people who are lower levels, like, they don't even know about the updates and, like, what the, what it means for them. And, like, if they get changes every every month, like, Mercy, like, people who haven't played in a week or whatever, once that update comes out, like, that's a huge difference. And, you like, they have to on. relearn the character pretty much. Yeah, that is a really good point. I I agree on that. It makes it tougher it, for sure it, it does it's i mean obviously Don't if you're they, not playing uh, every week then it polarizes Sorry, with when, you, when you update the game and you load it up don't they typically have like a little sheet that says updates or something or is that only for events? on pc only i don't think yeah 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 but like when on you load the pc up game, you can view the patch notes and stuff but n- not the patch notes but like a like a little dialogue box that pops up that just shows the major things that happen I think that's only for events that I'm thinking of. That pops yeah, up I'm in the sure. game. Like, not outside in the um, Bnet or Battle.net thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They should yeah. do something like that, though. Like, if there's a major rework, <clears throat> like when Sim was reworked, they probably should have put that in the game specifically. Yeah, to I tell agree. people, yeah, oh yeah, we added this shit or took away this. True. Yeah, but ever yeah. ever since then, it's been snuggled into my little PS4 disc drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, Same. You know, I cuddle with it at night too. Like it's it's. Uh, yeah. So Bobby yeah. came along later. Yeah, Bobby, how is it jumping in? Like you didn't know? Did you? I don't think you know. Like Robo Bobby, Club why 0. did you jump in? I actually got my PS4 because uh, Robbie got his. Oh, Robbie, yeah, shout sick. out. Shout out to Robbie. I'll yeah. Put, I'll put a picture of him up or something. Without, without <laughs> and then, you guys all, like, got, you, you guys all, like, said, like, oh, you should get Overwatch or whatever. Well, I guess I didn't really know you, the other people, but, like, Shan was like, yeah, you should get Overwatch. And I looked it up, and I was like, all right, this you looks pretty fucking cool. Because, like, mean, I played I say... Team Fortress for, like, maybe a day. And then I was like, all right, I, this wasn't really my game. We, It's just so old, too. Like, Team Fortress, I'm sure, was cool back in 2012 when it was first released. But I will say, uh, I mean, Shannon goes way back with Bob's, but um, 
I'd say, Bobby, we were pretty tight, but not like, like, we would invite you to all of our functions and stuff, but we were like we were on the team. Yeah, we were, I'd say I was friends <laughs> with Bobby. I was, but I don't know about you guys, but uh, now we're like, you know, we hang out every day on Overwatch. So, I mean, that aspect of it, above, above all else, I think is awesome. Just Bobby was the guy Aww. with the e cig at the party. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just That's raped right. Bobby's e cig. I always just rape his e cig. <laughs> I okay, totally Grant, got you're, like, you're the guy the the party with an e-cig with no nicotine. That's even that's worse. True. <laughs> I, got, I got rid of it though. Bobby, this I've is I've probably got right like thirty minutes worth of actual real life conversation with Bobby and over fucking like five hundred hours worth of Overwatch dialogue. <laughs> Bob's, we went to Cruella together though. Freshman year, we went to the paint oh, party. Yeah. That, that was, was a big letdown. It was fun, but not because of like the the concert. I don't know. It was fun. Uh, but you were <laughs> also the, you, so I didn't like the... paint getting into my contact lenses personally, but yeah, I I don't enjoy that either. And we didn't bring beer or anything else. And we were definitely <laughs> twenty one at the time. It was freshman year. No, we were freshmen. I know. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, for the viewers, regardless, mm-hmm. Overwatch has brought us much, much closer, and you know, I definitely feel close knit to all y'all, and I love you, yeah, so much. And we're for competitive. Sure. It's it's just like something to get that mask, male or female, but not in our case, competitive drive out. You know, <laughs> we're yeah. all very competitive people, so it's very fun. True. All right, you for sure. Start the uh, wrap up, Grant. Do you have a quiz ready for us, buddy? <laughs> oh yeah, I think I do. All right, this goes to uh, Russ Bolt because he's the last one. Oh, boy. The quiz question. All right, so since you guys requested for a map-related question, this is map-related. There are currently, I believe, 17 maps in Overwatch, not including the arcade modes. There are two maps that you cannot get an environmental kill. Or okay. die to the environment. Ooh, that's what a really good question. Uh, Temple of Anubis. Correct. And... Oh, man. Hold on. Give me Is a second. It... Oh, wait. No, not that I'm, one. I'm, I'm going through them in my head. I'm not going to say um, it. Um... We'll it's you, gotta be a payload. We'll give you one more minute, starting now. Minute, All right. Man. Thirty seconds. It's a. T- it is a tough question. It is a tough question, but there's seventeen. You should be able to go through them. I Damn! If I, I had say, a list of all the maps, I would easily be able to is get it. Safe it. to uh, eliminate the control points. I don't know. Can you? I'm trying to think. No Ilios. No Nepal. Li Zhang has it. No Li Zhang. No. I don't oh, want to King's be Row. No, just kidding, yep. just kidding. Not King's Row, not King's Row. <laughs> King's Row is eliminated. Eichenwald's eliminated. Numbani's eliminated. Temple of Anubis is... You have 25 is... seconds. All right, I'm going to oh, hold Oh, boy. I, I want to get Hold on. I want you to get it because I have a follow-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, me, give, me, give me a sec. Not watch point. All right, you have 10 seconds. Not... Oh, boy. Uh-oh, pressure's on. Oh, wait. Uh, I know what it is. No. Well. <laughs> um, so it's not Numbani. I'm giving you the buzzer, by the it's way. Not... Go ahead. Yeah, he missed Volskaya. it. You don't All right, I give up. up. Give it Hollywood. up. Ah, uh, Hollywood it? and Route 66 literally oh. didn't even cross my mind because fuck those yeah. maps. <laughs> well, Root has it. Hollywood. Damn. Uh, yeah. What was the follow-up? Good question, so, Grant. The follow, yeah, thanks. The uh, follow-up question was, there are four, uh, what are those maps? The additional maps, the arcade maps, there's four of them. Which one of those can you not get an environment? Ooh. That's easy. Uh, but it should be Eco easier. Point. Yep. Eco Point. And Is there two? Nope, there's only one. I feel like half yeah, the time one. I've played Overwatch, to go back to the warming up thing, like Eco Point was big for my development personally like back when it was the only map you could play yeah but now it sucks (laughs) (laughs) 
True. All righty. Um, so j- just because this is a young podcast, it's evolving. I thought I'd add a little new section. Um, oh, nice. Obviously, and it, I might give it to one of you guys to take over. But it's, it's just going to be a little poll. And maybe once we get a growing viewership, we might involve the community. But for now, I just wanted it between it to be between us. And to follow our map-related theme today, I wanted to ask everybody's favorite uh, control point map, starting with uh, control point. Oh boy! Are you, t- are you talking a specific map, or are you? I'm talking, talking only control thing? points. You say you know, have right. Li Jang, Oasis, Nepal, or Elios, but not their sub category. Or, all right, that's fine. In- including Those all four. subs, yeah, including all subs. Okay. So it includes all subs. Awesome. So we'll, we'll start with Schneid's, and we'll go down our uh, list on Discord. Oh. Okay, well, I think I make no secret of being a huge Li Zhang Tower fan. Uh, <laughs> do I have to say why or just what it is? Yeah, just what it is. I mean, you can say why. You can say why. I just, I play, I mean, I play D.Va. I like, I like uh, a lot of characters, I think, that do well on Li Zhang. And I just like the atmosphere. I've always been a city guy, and I just like the, how it's a darker <laughs> map. I don't know. It's a great map. Yeah, I like it being at nighttime as well. All right, Grant, go ahead. Um, my, I would say Ilios, but there's a map I absolutely hate on it, so I can't. Yeah, um, with it's that, the one without boobs. Yeah, and with that, I'm gonna have to say Li Zhang because I mean it's a well done map and for sure it's amazing. All right, Bob. and you can go clubbing afterwards. True. Um, mine is probably Li Zhang. I, I'd have to say Li Zhang. Yeah. Ooh, three for Wait, so... all great. So Li Zhang, Nepal, Ilios, what's the fourth control point? Oasis. Oasis. Oh <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> I like Oasis, but I really I wanted to go Nepal. outside of Li Zhang. I did too. But I'm gonna have to go Li Zhang too with a second to Nepal for sure. Wow. Yeah, I'd give I agree. second to Ilios, but second and a half to Nepal. Oh yeah, no, fair enough. Well I was gonna say Nepal. Nepal is definitely my favorite. I love um obviously all the boop. Um, the boop, boop uh, potential, potential, yes, potential. Um, obviously, I'd like to get some roadhog pull offs there. Um, it's really good for tracer as well, especially in the shrine map. I like how you kind of have that that area, um, that large area encircling it. Ooh. And temple is good. I mean, the weakest would definitely be the village, but the village isn't a bad one. I kind of like the 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 um the second floor of the village as well. It's um very useful vantage point. Um, and it's got like Han or Zenyatta's little like study too. The little yeah. Egg, so that's pretty cool. It's got some good lore. Yeah. What's your favorite boop zone? Ilios Well? <laughs> Ooh, I, oh, probably Ilios Well, just, just because everybody sees it. Just because like, yeah. when you pull off somebody, it's like, it's like fucking... oh fuck yeah, like boops for days. <laughs> so, it's like being on the big stage. Off. What you say? Like it's like being the premiere. It's like being the premiere, like yeah, act of the night. Exactly. I, I I also give a shout out to Nepal's um sanctuary or you know the the uh, sanctum. sanctum sanctum yeah because uh, big roadhog player you can do you can do some shady shit in there like controllers yeah. I've I've made people throw their controllers I'm sure <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm certain of it. Certain of it. <laughs> All right, um, you want to go on to uh, shout-outs now. Does anybody have one prepared? Because I definitely do not. I got a good one. All right, go ahead, Grant. <laughs> I always got good ones. All right. All right. So my shout-out goes to a guy. Hold on. I got to find his name real quick. Uh, his name is Jason Triplett. Um, where was he? He was in South End's Gallo Pub. And I love Grant shout-outs. Was- <laughs> I did too. <laughs> and he <laughs> okay. This is pretty. <laughs> this is pretty funny. So he was a he was a, a hero basically. He helped push a cop car um, out of the out of a snow pile basically. He saved it from uh, being stuck there. And the best part was is he was wearing a dress, <laughs> and he was dressed as a character from Frozen. <laughs> oh my god! Was it like Elsa? <laughs> Yes, it was Elsa. This guy oh is 30, 37 years old and an attorney. 
he's got to be a My Little Pony guy, too, I bet. Oh, man. There's That's a video and everything. Awesome. It's pretty funny. Everyone knows you dress up as Mulan if you're dressing, if you're going to do a drag for a Disney movie. Oh, I'll link God. it in the in the Discord. Pretty funny. All right. Does anybody want to go right. next? Yeah, uh, I will if nobody else. Um, yeah, so I... I'd like to shout out uh, my brother, Lucas. He's turning 18 uh, next week, and he's a new fan of the podcast. Also, pretty bright kid with uh, more so than me with, like, video editing, and uh, he, do- he did, like, uh, animation thing. So I'm looking forward to see uh, how he does as an adult, and I hope he returns to Overwatch soon. Nice. Yeah, we should That'd hire be- him. For sure. <laughs> Give him his paycheck like i all get like i give all you guys um (laughs) all right i was gonna go next um mine was going to be for um the recent release of fallout 4 vr um and it's rocky rocky uh release it was virtually unplayable day one and day two it was kind of playable and it's still having a lot of issues um as you know like many bethesda games do but it's uh it's generally received a positive um review review yes uh, are you, are right you now. <laughs> i've had this drawn for a long time but yeah no i mean you know it's definitely something i'd like to try it'd be interesting like a full feature game like that in vr i mean if i have you know if i if bitcoin goes up a ton maybe i'll pick it up but uh yeah that's my shout out bitcoin's on the decline boy i know it is boy <laughs> all right uh tonight did you go yep all right, all right. um all right, yeah, go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead Russell. i don't know I don't right. so. um i'm gonna give a shout out to if anybody watches netflix i came across a really good series the other day that i liked a lot uh, it's just one season uh, called Manhunt, Ooh. and oh. it's basically like uh, um, it's okay. kind of a documentary, like based on real events, uh, all about the like how they caught and how they like came to the conclusion of who the uh, the bomber was in i don't know when the time frame was but it was no 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 no. it was the uh unabomber like he would mail his bombs and like bomb airplanes and stuff he bombed like he sent out like 17 bombs in 16 years or something and Mm. so and the dude was like super high iq they couldn't find him for like 17 years so the series it's like eight to ten episodes but it's all about how this one dude in the fbi uh got like super into the case and like obsessed (laughs) over it and basically in the end caught him so it was really good series but i'm really into that stuff but yeah that's my shout out very nice all right bob go ahead all right, Bob my shout out is going to be to um, my TI-84 calculator because it's right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> of. You've gotten me. I've had it for like five years, and it still works on the same pair of batteries. Fuck yeah. And I, I put notes in it, tips. If you oh, need, yeah. if you get a youth, like a, a calculator, you can just put notes in it. Oh, you like, cheat. Yeah, right. I did that all the time, man. I and never. No one ever knows. No, sorry. So, I never got uh sorry. What a shout out. <laughs> and and you I was gonna say I never ever had one. But my yeah. old junior high calculator is still going. You can write boobs on it. I cheated right with that fucker. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Happy oh, four. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. We have an audience <laughs> shout out today. Oh Ooh. yeah. Oh, Quick yeah. shot. Bang bang. Quick shot. Did we shout him out last week? No, no, no. He actually, we shouted him out, like just him but, individually. Uh, individually. Oh, okay. All right, here it is. Here All right. is. Look at the. Here, here here so he gives a shout out to Mister Noodles. I fucking love me some noodles, especially the Mister kind. I Have enjoyed the Mr. episode noodles? as usual. Keep up the good work, lads. So we Hell appreciate yeah. it. Thank you very oh, much. What what a thanks, guy. Quick Shot. What a guy. And I really like Mister Noodles. Someday we're gonna drink together. Oh, yeah. And I hope you enjoy your noodles, sir. 
That's a wrap up, boys. I got a wrap up. Episode. You don't want to take out. You don't want to eat noodles before you drink Mike's hard lemonade. Very true. All right, we will see y'all in episode five. Everybody have a good night. Tip your waitresses and stay Gucci, my friends. Get aggressive. I tip my waiter, dude. I tip my waiter.